Hey there, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you need a website, then you should definitely check out Squarespace and more on that later. In this video, I'm gonna be covering how to get proper exposure on the Canon R6 Mark II. Now, there's some stuff in here that will be applicable to other Canon cameras, but there's also some stuff that's very specific to the R6 Mark II. In general, I have two approaches to getting proper exposure in a camera, one of which is when I'm in a situation where it's more run and gun, like when I'm outside, I essentially expose the image as high as possible without clipping the highlights, and then I just dial back the exposure just a little bit. Now, I cover this in detail in another video that I made about exposing and color grading C-Log3, which I will leave linked down below. You should definitely check that out if you're looking for some basic ways to handle C-Log3 footage and also my methods of exposing. So I don't wanna cover that in this video. I wanna talk more about controlled lighting situations. And as I said, specifically some stuff about the R6 Mark II. So there are two ways of getting exposure in the R6 Mark II. You can use false color, which is a new addition to the Canon mirrorless cameras that's not previously on any of the Canon mirrorless cameras other than the R5C. Well, that's technically a cinema camera, whatever. <laughs> uh, and the other one is using zebras. And the way we're gonna go about that is by using a gray card. So if you do not have a gray card, I highly recommend that you pick one up. They're like 10 bucks. I'll leave a link down below in the description if you wanna pick one up. Use this for not only getting proper exposure, but setting custom white balances, a super handy tool. One thing I wanna point out about this is that when you are setting exposure using a gray card, you wanna make sure you put this wherever the subject is. This is what you're exposing for. So I know a lot of people ask about how to expose based on skin tones and stuff like that. Everyone has different skin tones. I've never used skin tones to judge exposure. If you get the uh, middle gray exposed properly, where the subject is gonna be, because the subject is what you're exposing for, then you're in pretty good shape. So you'll be using a gray card. Now, how do we know what exposure we're looking to get in C-Log3 and the R6 Mark II? Well, every manufacturer will supply a certain IRE percentage or an exposure value that they're looking for in a certain log curve on a certain camera. So for C-Log3, we're looking to get 35% on the Canon cameras. So when we jump in the camera, I will verify this using the false color and zebras, and I'll show you exactly because once we uh, exposed with false color, we'll be able to measure in the computer and show you that it's around 35%. So let's jump over into the camera. Let me show you how to do this with false color and zebras. So I wanna show you the two different ways of getting proper exposure on a gray card in the R6 Mark II. So here's the setup. We got the R6 Mark II. We have a gray card placed in front of the camera here. And this is where you'll put the gray card is kind of like where the subject is gonna be. So pretend that that's where a subject is. They can hold up the gray card. You can I'm, have it clamped to a tripod here. But I do wanna mention that I do have one light that's coming in from the right-hand side. So a key light on this side, which is pretty common when you're shooting a subject like a person, you'll have one big key light. And depending on how much fill you use and stuff like that, uh, you know, the person's face might be darker on one side than the other. Again, personal preference. But right here, because the light is shining from this side, it will be brighter on the right-hand side than the left-hand side of the gray card. So keep that in mind. And we will see that with the exposure. So let's jump into the settings here. So if we go over to the fourth page, we will see, go down to the Canon log settings. Make sure you have C-Log3 turned on. Now for view assist, I generally recommend that you keep this on because this will add some contrast and saturation to the image on the LCD screen without baking anything into the image. Really helps judge exposure and color, but there's a weird quirk in this camera that if you have view assist turned on, you can't use false color. So for now and for this demo, I'm gonna turn it off. And if you wanna use false color, you have to turn it off. For characteristics, I usually leave them all at zero, which I think is the default. And then the color space, I like to recommend using Cinema Gamut. It's my favorite color space and it helps match some of the other cameras as well. So that's for the log settings. So let's go over and look at the false color stuff. So over here on the seventh page, you have false color. So if we click on that, we're gonna turn false color on. And one thing that's cool is that the false color index is built into this camera. So if you click on this, there's a little chart here to help you remember what the different colors mean. These are the colors that are gonna show up on your screen. And so what we're looking for is we're trying to expose middle gray, so that's gonna be green. And it says 18% gray. 18% has to do with the reflectivity of light of that certain color paint or whatever. So this is middle gray, this is what we're looking for. So we're gonna be looking for green on our gray card, but all these things are in here to help you remember uh, what they mean. So if we back out of here, now we will see the colors on the screen, and this is false color. And the different colors represent different exposures. So right now we're at f2.8 and we're a little overexposed here. So I'm gonna stop down the lens and you'll see the colors changing. And as I stop down the lens, you'll see the green, which is what we're looking for, start creeping over the gray card. And I'd say around f5, we're gonna have proper exposure at the middle of the gray card. 
So this would be proper exposure using false color on a gray card, again, green. And so as I either stop down the lens or open up the lens, you can see that the exposure is different on one side than the other. Like I said, it's gonna be brighter on this side than it is on the other side. So this is proper exposure using false color. So let me talk about using zebras now. So we're gonna go back in the menu and we are going to turn false color off. And then we're gonna go down to zebras. Now for zebras, uh, again, some really quirky stuff in the Canon cameras, but we're gonna be aiming for 35% in C-Log3 for the gray card. So if we go down to zebra level one, I have it set at 35%, but one thing that I said is really quirky is that you get a plus or minus 5% tolerance, which is really annoying because that's not very precise. In the Sony cameras, you get plus or minus one, way more accurate, but let me show you how this works in practice here. So if we turn the zebras on, and again, you can't turn this on if peaking is on as well, so just keep that in mind. So now we have zebras on, and zebras are those stripy bits or the zebra patterns that are on the screen there. And so again, this was properly exposed like we just did with the false color. So you can see that our gray card is properly exposed. But as I did before, if I open up the lens here, it's making it brighter. And you can see that the zebras creep off around there. And that was an F3.2. And then if you keep going up here, they sort of slide off around F8. So for me, I would know that, you know, probably somewhere in the middle at F5 is probably good. So again, this isn't super precise, not nearly as precise as the false color. Uh, if I am using this method, I'll often like go up and down and then kind of go down the middle. And you could do that, you get your exposure by changing the aperture or changing the lighting, changing your ND filter, those sorts of things. So let me take, let me record this at the proper exposure at F5. And then we will take this in the computer and sh I'll show you what this looks like and see how the, all these numbers actually work in the computer. So here we are in the computer with the clip that I just captured using the uh, false color to get middle gray properly exposed on this gray card. And what we're gonna use is the waveform over here. So what we're gonna do is I wanna zoom in just so we just have the gray card here. And so if you look over here at the, uh, the waveform, you can see that the brighter bits, those are the white images, the little target here that's on the gray card. But what we're looking for is the, you know, this pattern right here, which is gonna be the gray. And so what we can do here is if we drag this down, and we go to 35%, which is what we're looking for, you can see we're basically hitting right in the middle of the gray card. And so, as I said, the right-hand side will be brighter. So you can see if I move this up to sort of the brightest part of the gray card, it'll hit around 40%. And if I bring this down to the dar uh, darkest part, which is on the left-hand side over here, you hit around 30%. So you can really see how accurate this is that, you know, we're really aiming for 35% in the center of the gray card and that's what we got. I just wanna make sure you see how this works inside the computer and in terms of the IRE levels and how bright everything is. Now that we know how to set proper exposure, we, we need to talk about whether or not that is the right exposure for this camera. Now, generally speaking, I do recommend that you stick to the manufacturer's recommendations, but in this case, I found some different results and I wanna share those results with you and give you some recommendations for exposure. But before we get onto that, I need to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. If you're a creative, a content creator, or a small business owner, you need a website. Believe me, you really do. I am really excited to have Squarespace as a sponsor because I have personally been using Squarespace for years. Your website can be as simple as a landing spot for people to find your contact info and social media, but it's also a great place to show off your photos, videos, portfolio, artwork, etc. They even let you host videos directly. No need to link a YouTube or Vimeo video, and it looks a lot more professional and seamless. It's simple to set up a website with their amazing templates. They make it super easy, and anyone can do it pretty quickly. They have a lot of other cool stuff, like the ability to set up an online store, to schedule appointments, or have member areas. You should definitely head over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Josh Satin to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Link in description. Now let's look at some tests and comparisons and get onto my recommendations for exposure for the R6 Mark II. As I said earlier, I generally recommend that you stick to the camera manufacturer's recommendations, whatever they say to expose in their log profile. I usually stick with that and it's usually pretty solid. But in this case, I think it's different. So instead of just me giving a recommendation, I wanna show you some examples here. And what I did was I exposed properly using false color and then I overexposed 
by a third of a stop each time to go from zero stops up to two stops. And then I just adjusted the exposure in post. The color grading was all this, all the same. I copied it, but I just adjusted the exposure. So take a look here at, you know, basically zero stops over. So properly exposed going up from a third to two thirds and, and moving up. I think the image really does clean up at around one or one and a third stops over. It does get progressively cleaner up to two stops, but I think the difference between one and a third and two stops over is not that much. So overall, I'd probably recommend that you expose one or one and a third stops over what they recommend. Now, there, this isn't in every situation because if you have extreme highlights, you could easily blow them out if you are overexposing the image. So as a filmmaker, as a videographer, you have to decide what's important. And generally speaking, your subject is the most important thing. So you can either bring up the key light to try to balance out the backlights, those sorts of things. But generally, if you're in a situation like this, which is low dynamic range, I don't have anything super bright in the background or anything like that, I will probably overexpose this by one to one and a third stops. So how do we do that in the camera? Well, it's pretty handy because if you remember looking at the uh, false color chart, there the pink color is one stop over middle gray. So you can just use the pink and a gray card and you should be all set. So if you are using zebras and you prefer to use zebras, what I did was you can, I checked it out, I overexposed by one stop and then looked at the waveforms and it looks like you're aiming for about 45% IRE. So you probably wanna to set to 45% and then aim at the middle like I showed you earlier with the zebras. So overall, I'd say, yeah, one or one and a third stops over, but just be careful because you can blow out your highlights. And if you are, as I said, shooting outside with really bright, uh, sunlight or really high dynamic range situation, I just usually just make sure I don't clip the highlights because really nothing looks more digital or DSLR like than clipping your highlights. And that's one thing I really wanna make sure. But again, you get a much cleaner image by just exposing a little bit to the right on this camera. And I wanted to share that with you because a lot of people have been asking and I've been seeing a lot of really noisy results on this camera when I expose properly. So when I was showing you how to get proper exposure using zebras and false color earlier on in this video, I was using the aperture to control the exposure. And you definitely can do that. But at the end of this video here, I wanna give you some general tips about exposure and how I approach it. So first of all, the shutter speed, I always leave at double the frame rate. So if you're at 24 frames a second, you set the shutter to one over 50. If you're at 60 frames a second, one over 125, et cetera. I always leave the ISO at the base ISO, which in C-Log3 is gonna be 800, but it'll depend on which camera, which log profile you're shooting in. And then you can control the aperture to determine the amount of depth of field. So if you're looking for a shallow depth of field, you open up the lens for lower aperture, et cetera. And then at that point, I'm gonna control the exposure using lighting if I'm in a controlled situation like this. So raise the exposure by raising the intensity of the light and vice versa. Or if I'm outside and it's too bright, or if I'm in a situation where it's too bright, I'll add an ND filter to control the exposure. So generally speaking, once I set my aperture based on depth of the field, I'm controlling the exposure with lighting and ND. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting subscribe down below. Also remember to check out that Exposing Grading C-Log3 video, which I'll leave linked over here and down below. Big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.